Hello, hello, hello! Hey. Yo. I, I, I always feel like I, I do the... Oh, wow. You guys are awesome. Let's give everyone what you drank. Uh, that's great. Every time I come out on the stage, I always feel like I'm dancing like Elaine from Seinfeld. I'm always like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, hey, who's uh, excited for the last ship? <laughs> who's excited for the last ship? Because Adam Baldwin's here. <laughs> you kiss asses. All right, first things first, we're going to watch a trailer. Let's do that, shall we? Roll it. Good afternoon, Nathan James. After four very challenging months, we're going home. Yeah. See, I want you back on the ship. Tell the captain that I'll return when I'm ready. From Michael Bay. We have to save the samples. Go hands man your battle station. Take them out. More than 7 million viewers have made TNT's The Last Ship Cable's number one new series. It's a blockbuster, packed with speed, suspense, and action. Now, catch up on all the excitement and suspense of the season so far. You need to hand that case over to me right now. You may have just gone right to war now. with Russia, and they were clearly after you. I want answers! Captain... We're the President of the United States on the VidCon. Most of our population is dying or dead. You have to come home. The world is sick, Captain Chandler. That what's in that case might be the only hope that we have. Mike, we're not going home. It's not your call. You don't get to play God. I'm still the captain of this ship. Our mission now is simple. To stay alive until we find the cure. There's an unmanned food and fuel station outside Guantanamo Bay. That is our destination. There were 9,000 people stationed there. Something about this doesn't feel right. Get the hell out of there! Text Nolan. Welcome to Get Home. Sir, Cobra team's trapped inside the hospital. They're running out of air. We'll leave all food on this side of the building. What if he dies? Target acquired. Fire! We don't negotiate with terrorists. Captain, I'm picking up a contact headed for the harbor. It's the Russians. Set general quarters now! I am Konstantin Nikolaevich Ruskov. Admiral of the Red Banner Northern Fleet. Turn over the doctor, or you die in Cuba. Sorry, Admiral. I don't take orders from you. Nobody move! If I open this, the virus will kill everybody on the ship! Ah! You almost killed my entire crew. You've taken my family. What would you have done? I will sink you. This is an Arleigh Burke destroyer. It was built to fight. You better know how. Fire torpedoes! We're gonna hit the coral in 15 seconds. Hang on. Something must have torn off the filters. That's on me. We cut her a little tight getting out of Gitmo. How bad is it? We'll be stuck in place until we get the engines repaired. We're already running out of drinking water. I need the virus at a constant low temperature. There's a low front coming in from the east. Winds don't blow our way. We'll kill our crew. Fire! The breakthrough that I've been working towards, it's happened. Dr. Scott's gonna need some primates to test your vaccine. Apparently there's a monkey reserve a few miles up the river. Masks! Welcome to my jungle. This cannot stand. Sir, with all due respect. I know it's not on mission and I don't care. We cannot leave these people like that. We're supposed to be saving the world. Shouldn't it be worth saving? We came to hunt. It's over. Drop the knife. Every day we don't come home with the vaccines a day, another half a million people die. Now our duty is to the entire world, because in that lab in our Hilo Bay are the ingredients for a cure. We will come through this together, and we will prevail. The Last Ship continues all new Sundays at 9 on TNT. The Last Ship! There are no other ships! It's the last one. <laughs> this summer and this summer only. 
Uh, so, hey, couple of orders of business. Is there flash photography allowed in this panel? No. Is there video allowed in this panel? No. <laughs> you guys are so well trained. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 and one and one last thing, uh, this is a sold out panel, so guess how much money you guys just raised for Operation Smile? Six thousand dollars! Six thousand dollars! It's amazing. That is roughly 25 kids whose lives you've changed forever. Collectively, we've done that. So give yourselves a pat on the back. Pat your neighbor on the back. One, two, three, four, five. That's all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, and coming out to their own rock music, apparently. Uh, please put your hands together for Adam Baldwin, Travis Van Winkle, Charles Burrell, Hank Steinberg, and Stephen Kane. It's a beautiful sight. Here, here's, here's one, here's one, here's one. I'll be playing the part of Rona Mitra. No, Zachy can do, uh, you can do an English accent, so anytime you want to jump in there and, no. Uh, uh. <laughs> What a great place to be. Thank you so much for coming down and coming out and supporting Operation Smile. And The Last Ship was our new show, and these are the creators, and two of my dear friends in the cast, and Zach Levi and Nerd HQ for having us out here. This is just amazing. God bless you all. Travis, introduce yourself to these beautiful nerds. Beautiful nerds, my name is Travis Van Winkle. I play Danny Green. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And I like walks on the beach in the nude. That's it. Yep. That's my one like in the world. Nude walks on the beach. Every, everything else flows from there, so. Uh, and I am uh, Charles Parnell, and I play... I play uh, Master Chief Russell Jeter. But you can just call me Master Chief, if you know what I mean. I don't know how to follow that. Just call me Master Chief. When I have to say clever things, I'm sitting at a keyboard, usually. Um, Hank Steinberg, co-creator and executive producer of the show. Great, great to be here. And I'm Michael Bay. Uh, Stephen Kane, co-creator, executive producer of the show. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for hosting this. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we are we're so honored that you would be here, that you would give us your time. We understand that the convention is a crazy, hectic time. So you carved out time to spend time with these guys and to raise money for Operation Smile. So yes. God bless you all. You're yes. fantastic. God bless you all for raising money. We really appreciate it. Especially because we've only been on the air for five weeks. What's that? Especially because we've only been on the air for five weeks. Well, we, th there's we that appreciate too. that you're But look, look at the love it. you guys are getting for five weeks. But that's more than that's more than half the time Firefly was on. <laughs> so that's winning. That's true. Yeah. Winning. And, and Too by soon. The, Too and by soon. the way, might I add? Might I add? You guys should you guys should know this that you know Chuck wasn't even on the air when we had our first panel at Comic Con, and we had a full ballroom. It was like two thousand people, and I would imagine that the connective tissue between all of this is one Adam Baldwin. So. <laughs> Guilty. Thank you. Oh. So let's, uh, hey, uh, anybody back in the tech booth, if you guys can start that clock, because uh, I need to know how much time we have, we have left, because there actually is a time limit. <laughs> as crazy as it might seem, I know, right? Uh, 
There we go, counting down, and then we're all gonna just blow up. And and one... where where, where are we where can one <laughs> watch this on the internet? Uh, oh yes, and also we're live streaming to the world. You can watch this um, at thenerdmachine.com. It's also gonna be on our YouTube uh, station after that. So. Uh, yeah, all that fun jazz. I'm sure you guys will be watching it later so you can see <laughs> how did I look in the audience? <laughs> uh, let's start with some questions because that's why we're here. Yes, right over there. And Hi, speak guys. up because we do have a sound check going on. Hi, guys. My name is Daria. I came from, from Russia, from Moscow. Uh -oh. uh, I saw the pilot and I loved it. Thank you. Uh, and um, Adam, I'm a big fan of yours since Firefly. I love you. <laughs> uh, I have a... Sorry. <laughs> My question for all of you, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit for, about the first few days on set and how did you get, uh, came to play those roles? And a second question is, maybe, especially for Adam, maybe you should think about coming to Russia sometimes to Moscow. <laughs> we love you there. <laughs> Your wife would love that trip, Adam. <laughs> Will Putin be there? Now, now, now I can never go. <laughs> the Russian people are a good people, though. Of course. Russian. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, your question about how, what was it like when we first stepped on the ship was am amazing because the Navy cooperated with us and, and helped us with all technical advice and, and uh, to make it as accurate as we could. So they really welcomed us aboard and uh, wanted to make sure that we were as accurate as we could be. And, and uh, we fell in love with them, and they apparently have fallen in love with us. So they've given us cooperation the whole way through. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a humbling experience to be aboard a Navy guided missile destroyer and realize how small you are in comparison to the power of the U.S. Navy. You bet. Yeah, uh, working with the Navy just by our side the whole time was like plugging into a source or into an outlet. Because as an actor, you put on the uniform and you think, okay, I can play Navy, but you go on this ship and everyone around you is actually in the Navy, whoop, something happens where you just, you, you feel like you're in the Navy. So walking on set the first couple of days was just a big surprise to how much I actually felt like I was a part of their crew and how they allowed that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. It's like the world's greatest toy that you're stepping onto, you know, as a kid. It's like, yeah, that's the only way I can describe it. I'm just in awe, and I wanted to touch everything. Um, and then I kept having to tell myself, these are real things. You can kill people with the flip of a switch. So I had to kind of just walk around like this and try not to bump my head, because if you're over 5'10", there's a lot of going on. But it was amazing being on the ship the first few days. Has it affected y'all's ability to uh, write and produce the show? I mean, having that kind of input directly from the Navy? Yeah, well, I mean, when Hank and I started, <clears throat> obviously we were both ex-Navy SEALs, but we were like... <laughs> Why is that so obviously funny? <laughs> All right, we met in Hebrew school. Anyway, the point is, the point is we didn't know a lot but about the that Navy. That doesn't go together. Yeah. We, we met, we, we didn't know a lot about the Navy. We knew we had a story to tell. And so we asked the right questions and we got answers that just blew us away. And so we would ask the real people, all right, you're sitting at your desk and you see three blips on the screen and you see a, a missile coming, you know, what do you say? And because our instinct was you say, everybody duck or watch out, you know. <laughs> and they say, oh, we scream, vampire, 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 kill track, 5024, kill, engage with birds. And I just, we just took dictation, you know, it was amazing. But, so that was the technical side of it, but also there was the whole honor, courage, and commitment that the, the ethos of the Navy that we just, all of us absorbed, but Hank and I at the beginning absorbed the sense of the culture of the Navy. They're not heroes, they're human beings. They're not heroes by some sort of magic. They, they work hard and they, they stick to a code and they inspired us to tell a story about everyday heroes. And so yeah, get it right, get the technical stuff right, learn how the, how the ship actually works because it's much more fun than making it up because they actually have a thing for everything um, but also you know get the story get the characters and so you know how would a real master chief behave and then these guys brought themselves to bear as actors and filled the roles and kept their ears open and talked to the real people so it was a real 
osmosis and give and take. And I think the Navy got something out of it from us, too. I think we really bonded together. So at least they got to eat with us, which, which is good. We had good food. Yeah, our food was, a, I think, an upgrade uh, over the food on the, on the ship. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, having the, the Navy help us understand the culture, I mean, everything from we knew that we wanted to have a complex and interesting relationship, for example, between Adam's character, the XO, and Eric Dane's character, the captain, and the question of how, how do we do that? You know, it wasn't going to be Crimson Tide where there's two guys struggling for, you know, the, the ship the whole time. So how do we explore that? And they really got us to understand, you know, the complexities and the textures of it. So you have a scene, and it just takes a, one little glance from him or one little slight shading of a cadence in a, in a scene where there's six people in the room. Uh, you know, for those of you who saw Welcome to Gitmo, the, the scene where he's challenging Dr. Scott's uh, assumptions about what she's talking about. And, it, and it's just a very subtle undermining. And, and it's that kind of nuance that you, you get from working with the Navy. Because I think in the earlier drafts, you know, when we had conflicts and tensions between the captain and the XO, they were much more um, headbutting. And we gradually learned you know, it can actually be true and also dramatically more effective to be to be subtle in the way that you show if you disagree with the captain, and, and it makes it more tense. In Hollywood, there's uh, a lot of ways of saying F you, and none of them actually require you to say F you. You just say, hey, congratulations on that deal, or, or yeah, I'll call you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, call me. Great. Well, the Navy has that, too, and that was another thing we learned. There's a million ways of saying yes, sir. Or Roger that, or I I, or very well, and that was much more interesting to us. So that when you guys are watching, if you don't have that Navy knowledge, you start to get into that culture, and you know when someone says Roger that, that they're saying, you know, and it's so much more cool and interesting. And we showed the the, the show to the U.S. Navy in D.C. at a big screening, and when Travis's character and Kara and his girlfriend on the, sh on the show. They just kiss a little bit in a hiding spot, the kind of thing that most of us would say, okay, you know, they're kissing. The entire audience of Navy guys were like, ooh. <laughs> because for them, that was a real thing. And we deal with that on the show later on, you'll see. We deal with that, the repercussions, and why you can't fraternize and what it means for the mission. So it's that kind of stuff, too, that, that you know, the Navy gave us that was just priceless. Who's next? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, right there Hi, in front. Hi, how are you? Adam, I must admit, I'm here for you. And maybe I'll start watching the show. Show the ring again. <laughs> show the ring again. The last, last ship, ship. Pat. I'm... Hey, hey, hey. We know, we know. Um, my question is, um, I don't know if any of you have served in the military. And if you were to serve in the military, which branch would you choose? Well, after this show, I'd definitely choose the Navy. <laughs> No, but not, I'm not just saying that because of the show, because of what I learned about them. Like what Stephen was saying, they, if you have a superior and you have an order to execute, if you're in a private area, you can say all you want about how you feel about it, just as long as you get outside the door and you perform the function. So you're allowed to be a human being, and that, that's the biggest thing about That was my biggest worry about being a military guy, is like having to be in this kind of mold where you can't, where you're an author you're an automaton or you can't have your own thoughts. But in the Navy, you can really be a human being inside the uniform. So that's why it would appeal to me. Navy SEAL. Navy SEAL for me because these guys, they train so much mentally, emotionally, and physically that they can kill you without you knowing that they just killed you. <laughs> and if I had to be someone that killed people, I'd want to do it in that way. I, uh, I think I'd rather be in the USO band than actually. <laughs> but nonetheless, we went out to sea for a few nights a couple times during the shooting of the show. And I'm not a big uh, boat guy, I'll be honest with you. And I, I, seasickness was a concern, but I handle it like a true sailor. But there's something so beautiful about the ocean and the stars at night when you get just 30, 40 miles away from the coast. And that I, I understand now why people write so much literature about the sea because it's a pretty amazing thing. And, and this, the captain of the Dewey, the first captain we, we dealt with, uh, Captain Douglas, talked about being in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea and 
having the ship turn to 90 degrees in the morning as, at first light, so it's facing the, the rising sun. And he gets his coffee, and he puts on some Jimi Hendrix, and he, and he, and he watches the sunrise, and that, to me, is, is the magic of it. Now, granted, it's a dangerous job, but if I, if I had to pick the most romantic military job, I think that would be a sailor. I'd be in the PR department shooting infomercials. I get a little seasick. I wasn't on that trip. I was like, I'm going to stay home with my drama. I mean, you guys go have fun. Adam? Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, any of those, as long as they have a U.S. in front of it, I'm good. But for right now... But, but for right now... I'm, deta I'm detached to the U.S. Navy, and they made me an honorary surface warfare officer down in Washington, D.C., so can't, can't go wrong, U.S. Because you're an American. <laughs> you're American. I know, it shows. God bless you, Adam Baldwin, you're an American. <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, uh, who's next? Who's next? Uh, we got a couple hands uh, right there. Yes, you, sir. Uh, folks, thanks for coming. I've been enjoying the show. Um, and this is sort of a follow-up uh, to the first question, I guess. So Stephen and us haven't touched upon this. I'm curious, so I'd like to hear from the actors, what kind of uh, preparation or research did each of you do for your roles on the show? Well, uh, we were greeted the very first day. We shot the pilot at the naval base here. And we went into the, uh, one of the cafeterias, and we all sat on the banquette, and in walked our real-life counterparts and sat across from us. And then we had lunch for an hour, so Command Master Chief and me, I could ask him anything that crossed my mind. And then after that, they took us on the ship and showed us the ship through their eyes. And so I got to walk through with him and see what he looks at and the things he thinks about as he goes through his day. Um, and that was really... Person to person, that was most of the training. But then I did uh, my own reading about like the beginnings of the Navy to try to get into the real spirit of what was going on. Because we had a real ship, we have real uniforms. Everything is so authentic. I wanted to try to have as an authentic attitude about it as I could. So I read. I didn't read anything about the current Navy. I read just about the beginnings of the Navy, and that helped me a lot get into the spirit of things. I just watched kung fu movies. Just to get me in like a kick-ass like mode, um, I started doing CrossFit religiously, and the Navy SEALs are the ones who came up with CrossFit. Uh, I did knife and stick training, and I also did Muay Thai. And then I started reading about the psychology of killing. Uh, seriously, human beings aren't meant to kill, and when they have to, something goes on inside, and you, they have to learn how to deal with that and cope with that. And Navy SEALs go through training where they, they really dive into what it would be like and when that happens, how do you deal with it? So these guys are just so creative and they're so, uh, they're thoughtful about everything that they do. So I tried to really get into that mode. So did uh, you kill someone as part of your I, <laughs> And how did it feel? <laughs> the day will come. <laughs> I hope the day will never come. But we, if it does, we were given the book Command at Sea by Admiral Stavridis, and uh, we, uh, we, we delved into that. So we, re we read as much as we could into that. And, but as Charles said, it was mostly by osmosis hanging out with the actual crew members. And it's very humbling to be there with a 21-year-old who knows way more than you do, <laughs> teaching you about the bridge. And uh, so that, that, was, that was, we didn't have, uh, boot camp or anything like that. That was our basic training. It was actually being aboard uh, the Halsey and the Dewey and helping us get it right. You know. uh, who's next? Right here? Yes? Hi. Um, I was wondering if there was one scene or line or something from the script that really made you want to be a part of this project. I, I really like I really like my line. You don't get to play God. In in the pilot, because none of us really do. There are a lot of people that try, and it's not okay. Always f tends to fail. But 
I, 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 that, that rang a, a, a strong chord with me there. Yeah. Uh, there was a line that I had in episode three where I say, I love you, but stay the hell away from me. And I feel like that paints a pretty accurate picture of love. Love is, t it's difficult, it's work. And that's just, yeah. He can kill you, but he can't love you. And he can take nude walks on the beach <laughs> while killing. <laughs> nude, nude killing on the beach. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a, there's some live ones over this here. This is taking yeah. a turn. This is taking live a turn, ones. yeah. Season me, two, girl. baby, season two. <laughs> Write a beach scene, season two. Uh, Put me on it, or I'll kill you. <laughs> Note to self. Uh, my, my favorite line I have from the pilot would uh, have to be at the very end of the episode when it, has everyone seen the first episode? I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But in case someone hasn't, uh, at the very end of the episode, I have a moment where whether we're behind the captain or not kind of hinges on what I say. So that was my, that's my first favorite line. I have a few others in later episodes, but that's my first. Because these guys can write. My favorite line was when the head of the network said, sold. <laughs> Start writing. That was my favorite line, too. I, I take mine back. That was mine. Who's next? Right over here. Hello, everybody. Adam. I wanted to say, shiny. <laughs> what does that even mean anymore, man? <laughs> Brown coat for life. Brown coat for life. <laughs> Roger that. Yep. All right. Uh, Master Chief. I just like to, my question is for you. What is your wow. rate in the? Because uh, every enlisted sailor has a job and rate. I was a sailor for eight years, and mine was a gunner's mate. And I'm just wondering if the master chief, because they, they don't actually display their insignia. I just want very good question. Is. And ah. um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Go right ahead. And um, I know you guys touched a little bit on your prep for the work. Did you do any other like? Um, because you get in the episode three, I think, was the CQB going through the Guantanamo and uh, doing cross quarter combat. Did you guys do any of like prep for that, or go with the SEALs, or any any intense training like that way? Well, he got he got some specific fight training for that. I I had to learn how to drive the rib, which was fun. It was about a thirty minute lesson, and then some barking in my ear from Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> Open her up! Don't be scared! Don't be scared! Open her up! Come on, Charlie, come on! So I, it, after Charlie. a while, I, I, got, I let it go, and after hearing that for 20 minutes, you go, okay, <laughs> let's go. So that was my training. And then we were headed towards the rocks at one time. Yeah. <laughs> go, <laughs> Wait go, go, no. go, slow down, slow down. Slow down! down. <laughs> you told me they did their own stunts, yeah. it's true. But we're all still here, so. For the, the fight scene that I had, I had it last episode, our stunt choreographer, he has, he has uh, an eye patch, and he is like the scariest badass on the planet. And I went through a couple hours of rehearsing what we were gonna do, and he wasn't rehearsing. Like, it was, it was really intense. So we never went through too much training outside of being on set, but when we were on set, we were just, we dove straight in. Charles, yeah. did, did you know what your rate was? Was it rate? Yeah, well, do, do you know what your rate is? Well, as you, you know, as you know that once you're a master chief, you don't have a specific thing. But he came through. But, he came through yeah. signals intelligence. Uh, that's why you know all about reflectivity and whatnot. I thought we had successfully navigated our way away from that. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Zachy. <laughs> oh, I did step in that. Sorry. Uh, uh, moving on. Moving on. He worked in the skip. Yes. Worked in the More skip. of this anon. <laughs> Uh, my name is Kevin, and this uh, question is for Adam. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, I saw you. We, we, we were sitting down at the bar, and, and your hair was a little more brown than it is on the show. What's, is that makeup? Is that, that, that's it's all about, you know, a guy can change his persona with a haircut. That's all it takes. It was time to transition away from the old into the new. That sounds good. I bet you're glad they didn't turn off your mic either, right? Like they did at the other panel. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. That was awkward. Almost as awkward as now. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something. Uh, who's next? Yes, right over here. Uh, yeah. Um, how is there going to be more than two, maybe three seasons? Because we already know the there's the Russian sci the the scientist has his kids captured and he's helping the Russians and. Uh, the Russians spoilers, have, spoilers, spoilers, the, spoilers, spoilers. The, the Russians have almost killed... Spoiler, uh, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. What, what was the question, though? <laughs> how, how is there going to be... How is there going to be more than uh, two or three seasons? I'm honestly... It's a big world. And they have to save it. And most of it is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of stories to tell. Well said. A lot of stories to tell. That's just... Are you a plant from TNT? <laughs> we got a lot of seasons ahead of us, don't you worry. And, there, and there's a lot of unfucking to be done, so we got plenty. I'd love you to stay away from me. Nude. Yeah. That, that should just be your tagline, really. That's it. Big world and... Yeah, yeah, yeah all that stuff. Uh, everything you just said. Uh, who's next? Over there. Over there. On your right. Hi guys, um, I have a question for you about special. Uh, I really love you, Adam. Um, don't don't make them feel. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. So I uh, can. Did we you just tell... leave or what? <laughs> Get a room, guys. No, this is a question for all of you. So, um, can you tell a bit about auditioning for those roles? You know, maybe some funny stories during Fun auditioning. Oh, auditioning. Funny stories auditioning for the roles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny audition story. Well, I'll tell you, um, actually, my first audition was to be the XO the first time I went in for this show, and I didn't get that part. I'm sure you all are glad about that right now because you get to see your boy. Um, but then I went back, and I auditioned to be the Master Chief, and I came back for a different audition a few weeks later, and the casting director told me, let me tell you what I did. We had all these tapes of all these actors. Michael Bay came into my office and I said, you don't need to see those, just look at this. That's your guy. And that guy wasn't available, and so they got you. And so, yeah. yeah, exactly, so. Yeah, it's a heartwarming story. Yeah. Travis? Uh, it's not funny. <laughs> it's an audition story. Um, I auditioned for it, and then I got the job. Answer. Good answer. And then you took those... a nice nude walk on the beach to celebrate, right? Duh. I actually auditioned for it and didn't get the job. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Moving on. No, there, there was. There's another great actor who. Uh, who he won, you know, in an auditioning process, there is winning and losing. And he won that round. Unfortunately, he had a tragedy in his uh, personal life and was uh, forced to withdraw. So being number two choice, you know, the show must go on. I was able to step in there and, uh, you know, create my own version of Mike Slattery. Um, but we've been able to in invite him back on the show in another uh, capacity. And uh, we look forward to that. And <clears throat> it was a terrible thing, what happened, that yeah. caused this. That, yeah. uh, th that said, there is no one else who could be Mike Slattery but you. Well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we haven't finished contract negotiations. There could be somebody else if it doesn't work out. But I like. for now, it's a dangerous I, for ship. Now, yeah. It's a very dangerous yeah, virus. virus. Anybody could go at any time. I'm always appreciate it in the now and take the end of that stick and just take it and just get going. See? See, it's over, Rosie. It's over. <laughs> uh, yes, we have one right, right there in front. Okay. I'm really tall. I'm sorry. Um, so, Adam, this first of all, my... Wow. That's my fault. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm uh, kidding. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, my sister and I are huge fans of yours. If you would be able to shout out to her, her name's Robin, I would... That'd be amazing. What's Robin? Where? In where? Don't Canada. tell me the last name, but where? She's from Canada. I'm from Canada. Where in Canada? 
um, Thunder Bay. Robin and Thunder Bay, we miss you. Why the hell are you at Comic Con? Robin, 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 Robin. Hey, there you go. Oh, Robin. Rob, what's going on? Also, also, I was wondering when you were reading the scripts, all the actors, what specifically drew you to want the role that you auditioned for, or like what spoke to you about that character? Money. <laughs> No, it was an opportunity to work with the Navy and work for Michael Bay and work for TNT. My, uh, my dear friend, uh, Dean Devlin, he's produced a few shows for them. And you can see what a great comp company they are. And to be in their fold is, is something that uh, men, any actors would kill for. Well, figuratively kill for. <laughs> what do you have to say to that, Keller? Huh? <laughs> but, but the opportunity to work I mean, I get to play uh, a Navy CO. I mean, XO, it's great. I mean, come on. Come on. Uh, for me, everything he said, you know, the Michael Bay, big Navy show, you get to play someone that tries to save the world. I think we all have that little hero inside of us. I know as guys we do, where we want to do our thing to save the planet, so I got to play that. But also the romance. The romance is a big thing for me. I am a sucker for romance. Like, my, my favorite song is Whitney Houston, I'll Always Love You. I'm serious. We're gonna keep that in this room, people. We're not gonna keep tell that between about us, that. or I will kill you, and you won't even know it. Cause he <laughs> will always. What just happened? <laughs> I revealed too much. Charles. What was the question? The, what, 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 what is what your guilty you? pleasure song? Oh, sorry, no, that's not right. <laughs> Hopelessly devote. Oh. Um, uh, I, I like the position, well, after I didn't get the first part and I read the other part that I was auditioning for, uh, the, uh, pos his position on the ship, like, I kind of feel that way about myself not getting to but he's not too high he's not too low he deals with the with the upper echelon of the ship just as much as he deals with the crew of the ship and he's got to kind of be an even keel and i just liked that position to have to do that because it's challenging but it's fun to kind of keep all those balls in the air so to speak <laughs> who's next anybody over on this side over there and uh, there, in the Chargers jersey. Woo! Um, one thing I really appreciate about the show is how it addresses, I mean, because it's such an extreme situation, it addresses the important issues in life, faith, hope, love. And I'm wondering, I mean, you guys obviously do the writing, so you've thought a lot about this, but as actors in this imaginary situation, how has, doing this show made you look at those issues in your own life and what kind of conclusions or, or additions or subtractions maybe that you've made as a result? Have you f seen where we're at so far? That's way too deep for the... the <laughs> <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> Yes, I think the question was, how do our words inspire you and change you as human beings? And there's no pressure to answer in less than 10 minutes each. Steve, listen, Steve Kane and Hank Steinberg's words are some of the most beautifully written exposition that you could ever have in an action-adventure series by Michael Bay producing for TNT. <laughs> He's and running for, for you. But, but to your question, uh, <laughs> obviously in a situation like we have a, a global pandemic and, and your whole uh, societal breakdown is falling, everything's falling apart in front of you. you what's going to what's going to keep everything going? What where are you? How are you going to maintain civil order? How, civil order? How are you going to maintain your spirit and the love for your family lo lost or found? How do you how do you maintain that and 
I think Charles' character is the anchor, or certainly the fulcrum of that, that spiritual center, and it's really important to have a character like that. They are aboard every ship that I've ever been on, and uh, so it's made me appreciate the now. It's made me realize that life's too short to be cranky, so be nice to the people you meet. Hail fellow well met. And uh, <clears throat> nothing profound. I love my wife and kids. And what else is there? That's because of my script. kids. I think my, I think one of my kids is here somewhere. Yeah, uh, in the back. Yeah. So it's really wonderful to be here traveling. And that's that's really what life is all about. Is at the end, you want to be able to look around at the people you love, the faces you love, and say, we shared some love and some laughs, right? It's not about it's not about stuff. Not about cars and houses, although it's nice to live in a nice house with a great pool and all oh, that jacuzzi is just... <sighs> but it's not what it's about at the end. No, at the very end. At the very, very end, yeah. Too late. Uh, for me, the show, I was originally drawn to it because it aligns with uh, a, a lot of my purpose. And my purpose very much, and I, I fail at this all the time, but it's to do my best to serve others. And a lot of times we get caught up in our narcissistic ways and it's all about me, it's all about survival. And we, we get off track. And a lot of the things that my character deals with in, in this series is getting off track, realizing he's off track, and then doing what it takes to get back on track. And everyone in life goes through ups and downs and it's a, it's a matter of how we deal with them. They're inevitable, it's just how we deal with them. So for me, uh, it's just a great reminder to, no matter what I'm going through, keep serving keep doing what I can for other people. And you're really good at that too. Thank you for having us here and for starting this whole thing. That charity is amazing. Thanks, buddy. Oh, um, so, well, I don't know if I, I don't know if I've changed because of the role I've been playing so much, but it has heightened my awareness of things. And um, I like to think of myself as someone who I help a lot of people in my life in different ways. I'm, I'm a I'm a listener counselor kind of position in my family anyway, which is why this is kind of kismet to be in this role. Um, but the the difference b between me and the character is Jeter is willing to put forth anything inside of him in the service to help lift his captain or somebody on the crew, I'm not there yet. But I'd like to get to the point where I'm willing to give up myself to the degree that he is for the service of the greater good, you know. Um, so that's, it's, it's definitely made me much more aware of how far I can go in that direction. We said this earlier in the other panel. It's not, it didn't come this direction only. It, it goes back and forth. So. These guys brought a lot of themselves to the part, to their parts that they, and they taught us how to write for them. And I mean, Charles is a perfect example. He, he made his role bigger because he filled the space he was in. And, and Adam brought a sense of humor that was always kind of in the character, but then we were able just to go right at it. And, and Travis talking about, about his givingness and his desire to be part of something bigger, that had to, it got into our heads as we were writing and rewriting and rewriting. And we would be on the day and just discover things about these guys and then feed it back to them as if it came just from us, but it didn't come from just from us. And Hank mentioned earlier, we were taking a lunch break during the pilot at, at the Naval base, at the Starbucks area. And uh, you and Christina were just singing. And I turn around and I hear Christina who plays Alicia Granderson. And I'm, we're like, Hank and I are like, oh my God, do you hear, do you hear that? We, we need to remember that. And then one day we're in the writer's room and we're like, how about, remember how great Alicia, uh, Christina sings? How about we have her sing? And it, literally she got the script and she's like, I have to sing? <laughs> and we said, we know you can do it, we heard you. <laughs> and so it's our job to listen and to, and to absorb what we're getting from the guys and women that are on, in our cast and then to channel it to what, what, whatever we were already creating. And so it's a really, it's a composite and a collaboration from the get-go, not just with cast, but with crew as well. Art department, props, um, hair and makeup, everybody reads the scripts and imbibes what the show is and, and brings stuff to us. And we're like, oh my God, what a great detail. And it's because they thought about it and they brought it to bear. 
the directors, even people in the departments who wouldn't consider to be the creative side. They found ways to bring their talents to bear, and it shows you how there's not one person on a crew of a ship or a TV show that isn't crucial to the success of that mission. Well, it's, it's very interesting how, <clears throat> as we got to know how the Navy ship worked, it's not actually that different from how a production works. You know, there are the people that are, you know, sort of have the vision for um, how it's going to be executed, and then there are people, you know, people of different skill sets who are, you know, bringing their talents to bear, and yet everyone has to work in one cohesive manner, and, you know, there's issues of leadership, you know, if you're CEO of a company, or you're running a show, or you're a captain of a ship, how do you treat the people around you, and how do you create an environment around you that's going to work and bring out the, the talents of everyone around you, because it, it's ultimately a completely collaborative effort, and you, you rise and fall um, together. So it, it's really interesting to watch that and feel like the dynamics of a crew, our crew, it really echo the dynamics of, of the crew that we saw on the real ships that we shot on, and, then, and how they echo into the, our, you know, the fictional crew that we were creating. So you heard me and Christina singing and Christina singing on the show. Well, yeah, we, we, we had to, uh... Is that what I heard? We had to make a choice there, yeah, yeah. He's you also admiring... learned what not to do. You're admiring her singing, though. I know. I love her singing. The Navy has an expression that the, a good captain or a good leader sets the conditions for success so that you can execute with precision and style. And that's what we took to bear here. You know, we, we did everything we could to set the, con the right conditions, and then these guys executed with precision and style. Panache. I'm precision, he's style. Panache. That's panache. panache. <laughs> uh, we have panache a Baldwin. No, there should be, uh, well, there's Rizzoli and Isles, so it's, uh, there should be like a, a panache and... Uh, style. Yeah, panache and style or something like that, yeah. Uh, Next. That's a, after 10 I years... I gotta call of, TNT. After 10 years of last ship, that's, that's gonna be like my swan song. <laughs> Have a personal injury case? Come see Precision, Style, and Panache. Uh, we, we, have a, we have a question from online. Uh, Jamie from the Nerd Machine Facebook page asks, what are some of the craziest stunts you've had to do for yourself on the show? It was so crazy. because I, So I was at my desk, right? <laughs> and the paper was way across the room. But I knew I had a cramp, you see, right? So I had the cramp. And I said, you know what? damn it, I'm gonna get that paper. And so I called my assistant, and I said, I need paper. And she fell. It was a great stunt. Next question. You are a brave soul. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead, guys. I got the paper. Uh. Can't top that. Now, these guys did all their own stunts. It was good. Go ahead. Well, well we did have a really cumbersome day where um, we had to do some stunts jumping from one boat to another. That's all I'll say because it hasn't come on yet. And we have uh, lots of equipment and lots of things to deal with. And both boats are one boat is going and the other one is going. <laughs> Jump. Jump, Charles! So you have to jump. And we didn't get any training for that. It was just like, this is your training. Jump this time. You'll fuck it up, and you'll get it next time. <laughs> I guarantee it. And it was 100 degrees. Yeah, it was fun. Jump now. Oh, yeah. uh, for me, I was trapped inside of a medical facility, and I was running out of air. And I had a huge tank, like 75-pound tank on my back. And I have my gun. My gun is, has a, a grenade launcher on it. And it's like 20 pounds. And I basically have to pull a grenade, throw it, blow up the door, come out, and then shoot a couple people. Um, to me, that was the most fun thing because there was so much uh, technical things involved. There's a lot of explosion and things flying in my face, and everything had to be perfect in order for it to work. And those are the ones where a lot of the stunt coordinators and the special effects guys are so important. Because if you make one wrong move, someone can get seriously injured. And you don't think that's the case because you're like, it's just a little explosion. Who cares? But it's serious shit. So, for me, I like it when there's real danger involved with the stunts. 
Well, I, I should, I should add, I, I was being a little humble. It was three-hole punch paper <laughs> I was looking for. Real danger. Yeah. So, I mean, there were heroes and there were heroes. <laughs> Adam? Follow that. Panache? I don't consider the action that I get put through to be stunty. It's just part of the work. Uh, if you happen to fall down, Steve's like going, oh, jeez, here we go. <laughs> uh, my character really hasn't had many stunts so far this year. <laughs> That's what leadership brings. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You, you young seal, go fight those bad guys. Yes, don't, sir, don't Panache. Catch, don't catch on fire while you're over there. I'll watch. <laughs> so the closest you've come is almost hitting your eye with binoculars. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a close one. That was a close one. Uh, who do we got? Who do we got? Right up there. Right up there. I'm one of the people who've actually seen this show before I came here, so <laughs> I have questions. Uh, I was wondering, Michael Bay is a big name in entertainment. Did you choose TNT, or did you try to shop it around to other networks, maybe the broadcast, HBO, Showtime? Michael? It, um... <laughs> oh. I'll, let, it, I'll it, let my assistant in. It, 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 uh, it actually, the project originated that um, TNT had the rights to the book. They brought the book to Michael Bay, and uh, then they needed a writer. I was fortunate enough to get that uh, call from my agent and uh, went and met with those guys. And, and uh, Steve and I had always wanted to work together. We grew up together in college, college roommates, and uh, called Steve and said, this is a cool idea. Let's do it together. And uh, that's how it happened. What are those meetings like? You go in as you're, you're going to be the creators of a show. I mean, because we audition all the time, and it's terrifying. You have to have, I mean, uh, what sort of stuff do you have to have to prepare to go in and bring it? And um, how, like, how long is the list of ideas? You don't want to have too much because then you're like, their eyes glaze over. How long do you have in that room? And Well, it's, it's always, when, you know, you're a salesman. Everybody's a salesman for the most part. So you've you got to go in and pitch and you're selling yourself, you're selling your ideas. It's always nice when the head of the network already likes the idea and already has the idea, you know, paid for the rights of the book. So you're sort of halfway there when you get through the door. But, you know, luckily we had come up with a storyline that he thought was a really cool execution of that idea. And it was, I think the pitch was about 15, 20 minutes. Here's um, the, the key is you, you're telling, a, you're showing them the movie. So you say, sit back and check this out. So, you know, you start off, you say, it's the desert. It's buzzing hot. And you cut to this this tent of just sick people and overwhelmed doctors and everyone's bleeding out of their eyes and suddenly into this craziness this woman like in a spacesuit shows up and everyone's looking at her like she's crazy he's gonna do the whole pilot i'm gonna i'm not, I'm not yeah we have in we have six, six minutes. minutes i can do it i can do it <laughs> so you, you you present it like that and as a fan like this is the show i'm 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 excited to watch and then if they like it, and then they ask questions, and you say, absolutely, that's a great idea. We should definitely do what you just said. And, and so it's a give and take, you know? And uh, no, so it, you're, you're pitching, you're presenting the ideas. And also Michael Wright had a very strong idea. He said, I want this to be an, a blue sky action adventure show on the water, Star Trek at sea. I want this to be the fun event of the summer. Just give us that, and we're, and we're already, you know, there. So. It's a, it's a process. You want to give them what they want. You want to share with them what you think and you see. And, and when you walked out of the room, was it like, okay, done deal? Or was it like... In this case, yes. Sometimes like, they think about it. In this case, yes. Cool. That's awesome. He said, first of all, sold. Good feeling. Second of all, where are you going to shoot this? Yeah. And then we figured, well, I guess we're in good shape here. Wow. Great meeting. Yeah. Good meeting. Good meeting. Yeah. Good meeting. We hadn't heard that story, I don't think. Yeah. None of us. And then you're driving home and you punch the little uh, Bluetooth. Honey, guess what? Uh, this is the first call you make to your wife? Uh, we went to, di to lunch together in the valley at some steakhouse. And it was like putting on a show for these guys. And they said yes. And then we're done. And I go, holy shit, we have to write this now. <laughs> you know? And, I kept, and I'm, I'm the guy who says, it's just, it's, it's just no story. 
And he goes, it's going to be fine. I, I think fine. he said what that young man yeah. said. That's why I'm getting angry at you, seasons. because you are, my, out of this. you are my inner homunculus who says, it, you stink. But, um, Get out but of Steve's we, head. But we fought at it. We fought with it. And, and we no, it was just like this great moment. Yeah, we called our wives. We, we celebrated with each other. And we said, okay, we got something here. And then we knew that the responsibility was to deliver. And we'd be in the writer's room like, okay, what is Michael Bay? What is Michael Wright? What is TNT? We had that in our head, but we also were passionate about the material. Most importantly, what do they want to see? And what do I want to see? Right. That, that's how you really think of it. You think as a fan. You think, well, what would I want to see as a fan? So, yeah, and sometimes you pitch things and people are like this the whole time and you can't tell if they like it or not and then you get a call afterwards, we loved it, or you get a call. The worst is pitching a comedy where they're, they're just like this. And they're eating their, they're, they're eating their, picking at their salad while you're pitching comedy. And you're, well, in the next act, well, I'll just skip to the end. You know, there's some problems. But uh, I, I've had friends fake coughing fits during pitch meetings to get their, get their bearings. I mean, it's a, it's a very nerve wracking. It's like auditioning. Um, but it's your ideas that they hate, not you're not just you're not tall enough or you're not whatever. It's you as a person. It's it's your ideas that they hate, not your face. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what's worse? That is our time. Let's give a pre a big giant round of applause for our family. Let's hear them. Get out of here. Stay seated, you guys. Was that fun? Yeah. All right. I love you guys. God bless you. I hope to see you the rest of the weekend here at Nerd HQ. Have a great con, everybody. See you soon. All right, you guys. We're going to start with the two sides, the, to the, the wings over here, and then rows 9 and 10 on this side, out, and then turn left back into the venue where there's going to be a Smiles for Smiles. Everybody else, just hang tight for one second. We've got to get everybody out.